We're going to learn how to do vector addition by doing an example. So let's start off by reading it. A UPS driver leaves the warehouse and drives 22 kilometers north. She then drives in a direction 60 degrees south of east for 47 kilometers. What is her total displacement? Okay, so to begin we need to draw this. So I'm going to start a, go ahead and make a vector heading north for 22. Okay, that seems close enough. And that's 22 kilometers. Okay, now from that point, she's going to head 60 degrees south of east. Now what I like to do is do a kind of grid thing where the one vector ends. So I can, I can think of what quadrant I'm talking about. South of east would be in this quadrant over here. And when we say 60 degrees south of east, we mean if you were heading east and swung 60 degrees down, that's what we'd be talking about. So we're swinging down 60 degrees from that point. And that's going to give us something that looks about like that. So that's my second displacement vector. So now we have two displacement vectors. Now the total displacement is actually a vector that connects where she started over here to where she ended. So the, the third vector, which is the one we want to know about, is the one that starts here. So that is our final displacement that we're looking for. Now this one was 47 kilometers. Now what we need to do in order to do this is we're going to have to find the components of the two vectors that we have and use them to find the, the components of this. Okay, so what I'm talking about is we're going to take our first vector, this 22 kilometers. I'm going to call that A. So A is 22 kilometers. It doesn't matter what you call it. I just want to call it something. And what I need to know is what the horizontal and vertical components of our vector are. And if we use the formula that we learned before, it would be A times the cosine of the angle for this one and A times the sine of the angle for the vertical one. Now if you notice it's pointing straight up. It really has no horizontal component. A way to see that is if you think about if this is an origin and we have an axis that runs along here, something along these lines, it's at a 90 degree angle, so you would have 22 kilometers times the cosine of 90. The cosine of 90 is zero, so that's why we wind up with a big old zero here. The other one is going to be the, co uh, the sine of 90, which is one, so we wind up with 22 kilometers. You can do this in your calculator to prove it to yourself, but the bottom line is anything that's pointing up or down is all y and no x. It's, it has no horizontal component. If you had one pointing to the right or to the left, it would have no y. It would be all horizontal component, no vertical component. So those are the easy ones. Now this one on the other hand is going to be a little different. So what I, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the components in. Okay, so these are my two components. This one, I'm going to actually call this other vector B. So I'm sorry, let's do it over here. B is 47 kilometers. That's the magnitude of B. The angle for B is 60 degrees. BX is going to be B, which is 47 kilometers, times the cosine of the angle that it makes with the x-axis. And that's what this guy is. So that's 60 degrees. And when we do that, we're going to come up with a value of 23.5 kilometers. I went way too far to the right. Oh well. And our y component is going to be 47 kilometers times the sine of 60. Okay, and that's going to be 40.7 kilometers. However, this vector is pointing down. Okay, in our standard coordinate system, to the right is positive and up is positive. To the left is negative, down is negative. So I'm going to make this negative 40.7 kilometers. This is something you have to do when you add vectors like this. The rule is, if we're trying to find this here, we need to find its components. And I'm going to draw them first. Okay. Now you notice I made that down. Okay. Because this vector, if you had to describe it, it's down and to the right. So I've got a down and a to the right. Now, what's important here is uh, we are going to be finding 
not only the magnitude of this vector, but we need to find the direction. And when we find that direction, it's going to be with respect to, it's going to be this angle right here, because that's the angle that it makes with respect to the x-axis at the coordinate system that we created at its origin. So now, how do you do this? This is, this is where it gets cool. The component CX is equal to AX plus BX. And the Y component of C is going to be AY plus BY. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the A and B X components together. And then we're going to add the A and B Y components together. And let's see what we get. If you take the AX, which is zero, and add to it BX, which is 23.5 kilometers, you get 23.5 kilometers. Let's see if that makes sense. We started off and we went straight north. We didn't go west at all, or east, or any direction. We just went north. Then in our second motion, we went a little bit east and a little bit south. And if you notice, the amount that we wind up total down here to the east is exactly the same as the amount we did in our second part of our journey because that's the only time we even moved east. Okay, so let's look at what happens for our Y now. I've got 22 kilometers and then I'm adding BY, but it's minus. So I'm going to put minus 40.7 kilometers, and we get a value of minus 18.7 kilometers. Now again, if we think about this, in our first part of our trip, we went north some. In our second part of our trip, we went south some. The amount we went south on the second part is greater than the amount we went north on the first part. And so our total, our total displacement winds up being a little south of where we started. So those check out. Now, that's not good enough. Uh, if all we were asked to find were the components, that would be fine. But we need to find actually the magnitude of C and its direction. But we can do what we learned in the last video at this point. What we're going to do is I'm going to take the, the magnitude of C is going to be, using the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be CX squared plus CY squared. Well, CX is 23.5 kilometers, and then CY is going to be negative 18.7 kilometers. Extend that out. Whoop, there we go. And C is going to be 30 Point zero kilometers and we're not done with our vector until we find the direction as well and again we learned in the last video that you could find this using the inverse tangent of the y component which in our case is the negative 18.7 I'm not going to make it negative because we don't need to, and I'll tell you why in a moment. And then our X component is 23.5, and I'm not putting units because they're gonna cancel. And the angle I get is 38.5 degrees. Now, I have to describe what quadrant it's in. It's 38.5 degrees in this southeast quadrant. So we would say that it is south of east, which I abbreviate with a big old S of east. And there we go. That's your example. All vector addition problems are like this. Now, these were displacements. You could do this with velocities as well. Later on, we're going to learn to do this with forces.